1320 WILS Morning Wake Up. I must be in the wrong line of work, and I know listeners go, yeah, we told you that a long time ago. We listened to the show. Yikes. No, I mean um, lifeguards. Did you hear about this story? Lifeguards right now in Los Angeles. So that's like Baywatch. And I mean, yeah, if you're a movie star back in the day on Baywatch, you're going to make a lot of money. But I would assume lifeguards, you know, they could make a living, but it's not going to be crazy. Wrong. This is pretty good. The top lifeguards in Los Angeles working overtime are are making now, they topped last year, $500,000 a year. Are you kidding me? Five hundred grand. Okay, it's a dangerous job. So, so is fighter fighter. So is, you know, being a cop. It's, I, this half of that was regular. Half was about, about half was overtime compensation, and another eighty five thousand dollars added to that in fringe benefits. Did you think lifeguard was such a is an important job? Yes. Is it a half million dollar job? Okay, that's that's news to me. Anyway, that's in Los Angeles. County. What about uh, on the work job, on the workplace here? Most American workers, according to a new survey, are uh, being secretive with their employer and coworkers. No kidding, right? No kidding. Well, wait a minute. How secretive? 64% in the survey commissioned by JobSage are fearful about being authentically themselves around others in the workplace. Again, this is not sounding necessarily out of line, but in the era of the great um, you know, resignation going on. Maybe it is. Let's talk to Jeff Ma about it today. He's a workplace culture expert and wrote the book, Love is a Business Strategy, Resilience, Belonging, and Success. Jeff, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Appreciate you joining us. Absolutely. Does this surprise you that people say, yeah, I got to clam up? I mean, part of that, I think, goes with work in general. This is not where you get to fly your freak flag every day. You're here to work. And you're being employed to provide something of value that may not be what your personal, you know, either political, cultural views line up. You, you don't want to be shunned at work, but there are things I think you would not bring to the work table because they're not really part of the work table. But being authentically you, what does that mean to most people out there? What do you think? Yeah, you know, people think that sometimes the goal might have to be one or the other, right? Becoming best friends with everyone at work or being friends with nobody. And I think there's something in between, right? I think sure. that that it comes down to culture and culture is really about, can we be at least the parts of ourselves that are important? Can we not have to hide the parts that matter? That's the question we should be asking. When we talk about hiding the parts, uh, you know, back in the day that meant hiding the tattoos. That's not so much a thing anymore, but you know, I think it's a good example. Don't you? There's something that people are not afraid to show anymore. And there was a time when, I mean, unless you're in the, the most extreme of C-suites, and even then you may find that your CEO has got a fair amount of body ink as well. It's a cultural thing that has morphed in America. Is it is that the type of, type of thing we're talking about, being authentically you? These are my tattoos. I don't want to have to hide them from the world. No, I think. I think that's part of the problem. I think people need to change their mindsets around what we're even hiding. I think it starts with leaders. That CEO is a perfect example. He's got those tattoos, and he's trying to hide them. But that's actually not actually what he needs to be working on. That CEO actually needs to be ta- thinking about, am I able to admit mistakes to my team? Am I able to tell my team that I don't have all the answers? And when he's able to do this, what he does is he opens up this this, this pocket of vulnerability for people to come join and be human and make mistakes and you create a culture that is okay and comfortable with bringing those parts of ourselves to work you know there was um and i know it was based on fraud and deceit but you remember the movie like the wolf of wall street right yeah, yeah. and and with dicaprio okay so his character he's played some pretty manic guys in his career but there was something too though about the style of this guy who showed you some of his vulnerability and also how he thought he was omnipotent in other areas that attracted his workforce to him. I think you would agree that, that there was a reason for both the great success and then the downfall with the same, with the same guy. Are workers looking for that type of thing and leader? Not that maybe that specifically, but that kind of ability to become vulnerable like he did in that film. 
Absolutely. I mean, workers are, we, we as humans are yearning to connect with each other. In fact, we build organizations to come together and achieve a common goal. And yet, too often today, people are working under fear of, and the yeah. fear comes from within their own walls. If you think about that, it's crazy, right? I mean, we don't, we do not do our best work under fear. And so the, the way to overcome that is to have leadership and people around us as a culture holistically that are willing to show that we are all entirely human, admit those sides of us, right? It's not necessarily about tattoos and political affiliations, but more so, hey, I'm, I need your help or I'm having a bad day. And being able to say those things and have others around you say, hey, you know what? I've been there too. We had that relationship and I understand that that's okay. And we, we start protecting each other and it creates these amazing work outcomes. People, if they feel like they're allowed to be authentic and it's within the parameters of the job, I would think that they, the productivity would be good too. Again, just because it, I was at a horse race a week ago and my wife and I dressed 1938. And I said, I don't know if this is 1938 or not, but you know what? I think I'm rocking this look. I felt pretty good. I think she did too. I said, I, th- I feel pretty good about myself right now. And I think when people do that, it exudes with them because that's the vibe I get from others. Would you go along with that, that it can increase productivity in a, in a sense as well? 100%. I mean, it's part of the reason we wrote the book. <laughs> you, you have to have this type of environment to do the best work. People working out of fear only do as much not to get in trouble or to get hurt or protect themselves, right? So you have to create environments that feel safe and you actually unlock the power of true empowerment, the power of true productivity in anybody. Hmm. Um, The book here is called Love as a Business Strategy, Resilience, Belonging, and Success. I mean, I read the first part there, and I'm thinking, well, he could be referring to the world's oldest uh, profession, but I don't think that's what this is about. I think this (laughs) is about a different kind of love and business strategy. Is the book, man, this is a Wall Street Journal bestseller. Um, You've been doing pretty well with this, right? Absolutely, and and it's been changing lives, and that's what makes me so excited about it. Jeff Ma is our guest today, workplace culture expert. Yeah, majority of people, what a shocker, say they can't be themselves at work. Three and five say they're hiding something from their employer, not necessarily anything illegal, but they just don't feel comfortable, and that lack of comfort may be holding them and holding their business back. Jeff, thanks for coming on today. I appreciate it. Um, tell people where they can find the book. What, Amazon and bookstores? Yep, Amazon is a good place to find it. You can find it a lot of online retailers. It is that Wall Street Journal bestseller, so I appreciate it. I appreciate the time today.